when we started with the Greater Cedarburg Biodiversity Corridor, we looked at the entire area, which was 1,8 million hectares. We saw that the Sunfelt was one of the areas which we probably needed to start working first because of the high biodiversity and also because of the pressures from agriculture. We calculated that 2,7 hectares per day was lost to agriculture and that was for 365 days of the year. You can't go at that rate and think that it is always going to be that way. These resources are going to, they won't be able to recover as fast as we are taking things out. So we looked at mapping the Sunfelt and looked at where the green areas were still left on the farms and to try and link these green areas together. So from the Sunfelt to the mountain to be able to form this corridor. When we started with the Biodiversity Best Practice Project, it was about getting farmers to think and do differently about how do you balance agriculture and conservation. Hi, I'm going to go. Yes, you're right. I think the sand is very good for erosion. For all wind erosion, because when you make the sand ground kaal, like you can see on the land, and you can't see the sand, you can't see it. But you know, I say, we are going to go with ESCOM, the power is up. I have three circles out. Om daar gaan het de feest waar je spoelt om te maand lang te lopen. Nee, als je elkaar, als je elkaar hier in Abbas 60 dagen in de rand. Je weet je moet het doen, maar dus je weet als je spoelpunt staat, kost het geld. Ik bedoel, dus ik nu kan het zelfs nooit spoelpunt op de grond doen gaan. Dit is maar ongeluk op het meest leven. Je moet cirkels maken, maar als lang mis niet, dan kijk naar je gewoon. Sta je, als moet je gewoon ook beginnen bewaren, anders anders gaan niks overleven als kanarie. You're working in a living landscape and the idea is that you actually want to encourage biodiversity conservation but also better farming. So there's an environmental management plan that's drawn up. So it doesn't just focus on the areas that's not being farmed but it's, it's, a, it's an, a holistic approach, an integrated approach. You have to work with sectors, the agricultural sector, you have to work with your local authorities and, and that's what, what the concept is within the corridor. It's, it's people in partnership to make things happen. So far we have, we have 34 landowners that have signed up um, with the corridor um, and the, uh, the program that we run. Um, there is still a lot of, of, of properties um, vacant in between, but it's a long-term process. It's not something that will happen overnight. And um, it takes a while to, to, to get everybody on board, um, but slowly but surely we, we're moving in the right direction. Um, this is the, the Falloran Flay bird hide. One of the key issues was that you had this lovely bird hide on the flay, but very few people had access to it because the land around the water body is privately owned. The bird hide is built on, on the property um, or fencer club farm, which is also one of our stewardship sites. Um, and this was an excellent opportunity, one, to couple job creation, but also provide people access to, to the wetland. Well, the pelicans, I think they might be coming from Dyson Island. Um, and then they come here during the day to Fleur and Fly to, to feed um, on fish. And then um, we turn back to Dyson Island at night. And that's also where they, where they breed. And the colony of pelicans that, that play here at, at Fleur and Fly during the day, they're seen as the, I think it's the third largest population of pelican in South Africa. And they also seen as an endangered species. Now in the Matonsik Valley, it's at the back of the Piketberg Mountain. And this is the, the main catchment for the Falloran Flay wetland. Because this is the, the top part of the catchment, there is also a lot of, of alien plants uh, growing in this Falloran Flay River. And um, we've got the Working for Wetlands team, um, which is made up out of local unemployed people that we uh, employed to take out the, the alien vegetation out of the rivers um, um, in, in themselves and thus creating jobs for, for the local people. But that's what I say, the ideal is to look at the people, but let's see if you could secure additional funding to get good out of it. You can see the trees as they are very close. Yeah. As you look here. Here. You're going to miss it. 
Ja. Maar ik bedoel, dat is die omstandigheden. Um, ja, we ontstaan ons volledig die workshop management cursus gegeven. Maar als je met die, met die goede poem moet, moet ons dan meestal maar eens uitgegooid. Ja. Ja. Dus net die wat nou niet uitgegooid. Die kent zin, ja. Die zijn er. Mens mis mij, maar ons loop me altijd weer zo. Ons mm. uitkom, maar kijk ons maar spuit ons maar wat is gemis. Ja. Verleden jaar had ik nog niet gewend, maar toen ik nou, ik heb nog een cursus gehad. Maar um, ons het nou een cursus doen in die productie. Dat heeft mij bij beteken en ik kan nou zitten en ik beplan mijn ding lekker beplan. Zo so, hopelijk voor ons ons oude uitvee is ja, die beste, Want, um, beste contracteur in die land. <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to create a space for species movement and that's the whole idea behind the corridor. And species movement in terms of protecting evolutionary processes, providing the space for that to happen. And at the same time, you're quite in the back of your head, you also understand that climate change is a reality for us. Uh, especially if you're thinking if, if your climate is going to change, um, if you've got pollinators, that need, uh, that need a continuous stretch of, of, of vegetation to move. If they've got a barren piece of land and, and, and the energy that they have is only can cover them for 400 meters or something, that those, those pollinators won't be able to move beyond a certain space. So we're trying to create uh, connectivity in the landscape that's already fragmented. It was getting into the landscape that really give, gave me an appreciation for trying to do this kind of work, um, that whole connectivity thing. Um, but more than that, it was about changing behavior. If we do nothing else, that's the one thing I want to be able to leave behind, that you've changed behavior. Because you want to be able to say, long after we're gone, that people are doing things differently. And it shouldn't be a conservation agency's job alone to be doing conservation. It should be everybody's job. It should be everybody's responsibility. I can eat month to month. Ooh, the water is like a cold. This section of river has got the highest biodiversity. I um, mean, one small section of river, we find six different species that you don't find anywhere else. It's actually nice when you lie here in the water. You can actually see them. They swim in front of your of your of your diving mask um, all the time. She doesn't do anything to them. Oh. Yeah, we're very fortunate with this uh, section of river. Um, the, in summer times, the lower half of this river actually dries up, and then the alien fish um, that we introduced, like small and largemouth bass, cannot migrate up the river to be able to get to these indigenous fish. Um, and most of our other rivers have been have been bulldozed or or channeled, and the water is used um, for humans and agriculture. Um, and there's also a lot of alien vegetation, but because this is so high up in the mountain, this is still very pristine. Ik had precies wat jullie hier zo ik kom net in jullie rivier voor. Nergens anders niet. Zie je die bergen rivier, zie je die brede rivier niet. Dat is net iets zo bij jullie niet. En die olifant. Dat is speciaal, nee? Denk je dat niet? Die is met bewaar. Dat noemen ze endemisch. Als hij net hier voor komt, net in onze rivier. We're heading into the Cedarburg right now, and even though we can't see the mountains because of the rain and the mist and stuff, um, we're heading out to Wuppertal, which is one of the communities that we work with, with specifically focused on damage-causing animals, a workshop that we're running there. And they've got stock losses, and, it, and you know, it's a big thing when it starts to affect livelihoods. We're the ones that have changed the landscape and changed the habitat of these animals and plants. Um, so we need to find ways to, to get back to that balance. You want? It's rowdy. It could even be this rowdy. That's a stunning shot. Oh, you want for the food?
Nogal wat baie goed werk met hom, as het skilder groot is. Ga nog van die deadstop kallen. Nou, enige mens, selfs roofdier, as jy gaan as jy hierding om jou nek het, en jy bijt aan hom, mag jy jou tanden breek. Jy wil die ding een slechte ondervinding gee. So, as jy leer nie van vol, skaap aanval, gaan ek my tanden breek. So, skaap is in my koos nie. Dan stap ek lewe voorbij. Dan soek ek vir my bok in die veld. Luipert, wat nie skaap probleme is nie. Het nie jy, jou bierman, die bierman, al die jongens in die omgeving, het geen probleme nie. As al Luipert in die gebied loop, dan is jou jakkels en jou rooikat is weg. Hulle kom nie nabij nie. Maar soedra, soedra, ou, om nou gaan vang en die vat om uit die systeem uit weg, dan sit jy met jakkels en rooikat probleme. So hy duld nie aan ander, aan ander predator wat nabij sy, nabij sy gebied kom nie. Nou, nou, leid die geel wat nie hier tussen die rooikat al kan loop. The essence is about changing people's perception and their behavior about the land. Um, to understand that if they don't start working in a more sustainable manner, they, this won't be here 20 years from now. They won't have anything for their kids. When you see somebody go from, I don't want you on my property, to, you know, I noticed this. Can you guys come out and come have a look? It's that switch when people start thinking differently and asking different questions that excites me because that means that like the, the sum of all of those incremental changes is going to have a big effect at the end of the day. So that's what makes me happy. I'm just going to pop right here.